Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode we're going to try to actually fulfill the two contracts that we have here, put a Kerbal into orbit for 30 days and explore the moon gathering scientific data from it. Uh, last time we made some headway towards them but we didn't actually fulfill them. Uh, so here we have Atlas 3 which is basically the same as Atlas 2 except with solar panels up here uh, so that we can provide power, hopefully it'll be enough. Uh, we have a supply container with oxygen up there and then food and water down here. Uh, as far as room is concerned, I mean, it looks like the Kerbal is going to be okay for 99 days based on this, but we'll see. Um, reliability, one malfunction per year, 1.73, more like two. So maybe we should at least have the pod be higher quality. Well, actually, the quality is sort of point by point, huh? I guess we'll leave it be. Um, high quality. I mean, meantime before failure, four years. Um, in one month, that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we've got the Decker engine here, of course. So somebody mentioned that the burn time is actually the meantime before failure. I don't think so. I mean... Uh, the, uh, the, here it says mean time before failure. I think if they meant that the me burn time was the mean time before failure, it should say so. So regularly, the rated burn time is what it would uh, be able to do without with only 1% chance of failure. That's your normal burn time rating. Um, so yeah, if it's the mean time before failure, that's quite a very different thing. But we'll see. Uh, 70 ignitions. Now, the one engine that failed last time was this chrysalis engine. And, uh, well, I'm not going to attach it here, but uh, what we can see is I made a little bit of a mistake. It only really has one ignition, rated ignitions one, with the standard quality. So maybe I accidentally tried to ignite it twice and that's why I exploded. So, yeah, maybe that was the issue there. I think, I mean, that's my hypothesis. So, yeah, I think that was just my mistake. Um, here, I am a little bit miffed about these containers. Uh, you see the food is way more than the water and here the duration for the food is 52 days and the water is 39 days. So we really don't, I really wish I could rebalance this container because it doesn't seem balanced right at all. Um, it really needs maybe 10.4 even then it has too much food, maybe more like 9.1 and then it's about right. So yeah, I don't know why it has that particular mix. Uh, it doesn't seem to jive with what we need. So, and you know, the amount in the pod doesn't really matter. That's only 1.4. So that's not tilting it too much. And the what I mean, I guess even here in the pod, the food is overbalanced over the water. Maybe it's because they expect us to use fuel cells. Maybe, um, but in that case, yeah, I don't know. I can't read in a person's mind and why is it like this. But anyway, we've got uh, 39 days of water, uh, 50 days of oxygen, plenty of nitrogen, and 37 days of food right now. So we're gonna give Val her big chance. I mean, sitting in a pod for 30 days is not the most pleasant thing, but we are, you know, below the mass and we're gonna try it. If there's any sign of trouble, we'll try and bring her back. As far as the plan for if we have to splash down, I mean, Kerbals can swim, right? I mean, we can have her get out of the pod, but if it's underwater, can they get out of the pod? I don't know. Hmm. We're, we're gonna have to hope that we actually uh, are on land and not in the water, I guess. That's a reversal of the normal hopes, but here we are. Okay, so... Yep, everything seems configured to go. Let's try it. Okay, Valentina probably should have her helmet on, to be honest. Otherwise, looking fine. And uh, throttle up. SAS is on. And launch. Oh, shoot. Uh, things have gone pear shaped. Things, things have gone. <gasps> No. We just killed Val. 
Oh, I should have had a better... But even... Oh, man. Serious moment of silence. Wow. Right off there. This is worse than test flight, I swear. Oh, I should have been able to shut it down. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I guess we can recover this bit. Atlas 3 has resulted in great tragedy. In the midst of, really, this week of tragedies. Um, I Do we get, like, rescue missions? Because I haven't seen a rescue mission at all. Hmm. We may need to rethink things a little bit. What is the mean time before failure? I mean, maybe the rate of burn time is the mean time before failure, if it's gonna feel like that. Wow. 5 minutes 50 seconds. Should have gone with better engine quality, at least. Oh well. Okay, fine. We'll do the probe mission. I don't know. I'll need those rescue missions, though. I can't afford to hire Kerbals. So here's our probe mission. I decided to just dump the chrysalis stage that had a problem last time, though. Now with our recent uh, experience, I guess we're... Wow, that's too expensive, though. Going to high quality there makes it heavier, too. Shouldn't a higher quality engine be lighter? I mean, when you think about it, it'd be higher quality materials, which would be make it lighter, actually. I mean, unless it's just slapping on redundancy, I suppose. But the ex expense is tremendous. Wait, oh, uh, that, that counts for both. Oh, okay, well, uh, if it's both uh, at the same time, that's fine. Fine, we'll go high quality on all of them. Okay, so we dumped the chrysalis stage and it's just this stage. Uh, to solve some of our other problems, we've got new solar panels. And we've also got these communication dishes. Here we see um, a max speed of 40 kilobytes per second, and that compares to 1.54 for the Commutron 8s that we had before. So we have two of these, hopefully they'll be able to transmit the data quicker. Um, quickly enough, I don't know, but, you know, we... Well, we're over mass though. Oh, we can just balance it on the engines. Okay, so that'll be okay, hopefully. Hopefully, we won't have more failures. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Suddenly, this is all like Realism Overhaul RP-1 with Test Flight or something. Should never have done crewed missions. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on. That's not enough electric charge. Hold on. Let me recover vessel. We're gonna... I don't know if we have enough mass room for batteries, but we need more batteries, I think. I think these are our best batteries. There are a lot of solar panels. This is the only other battery pack. Let's see, how much room? Now eh, we have some. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. We're gonna have to talk to the manufacturers of this engine, this swivel. Yeah, part of the problem with the Valentina launch is, I've mentioned before, I'm using a different uh, throttle axis than I normally do for a Kerbal Space Program. I'm using the throttle axis that I do for flight sims, but that's not normally what I use for Kerbal Space Program. I use a different uh, axis, because uh, I've got a throttle quadrant and also uh, joystick with a throttle on it. I usually use the throttle on the joystick, but now I'm using the throttle quadrant and I didn't reach for the right axis in time for, to save Valentina. I reached for the wrong one. Go figure. A little piloting lessons. You have to get used to your controls so that when things go wrong you reach for the right control on instinct rather than thinking about it. Now let's get the antennae out. That is a very floppy way to extend, okay. So this currently has 
30 ignitions left and 22 minutes. I mean, the remaining, the fact that it's counting down the remaining burn time indicates to me that that's a, a proper rated burn time and not a mean time before failure, otherwise it wouldn't be counting down. So that is not a mean time before failure there. As a result of dopping, uh, dropping the other stage, we have less Delta V, of course, now, but we should have more than enough anyway. Okay, that is the end of that burn. And now let's take a look at the moon situation. We still haven't unlocked uh, tracking station upgrades or anything. We can't even target the moon. But we can sort of assume that our desired burn comes roughly the same time as we would plot for the moon in the stock system. Don't know if we're gonna get the moon poking over the horizon. Oh, uh, we've we're over uh, that area. Eventually, we'll do comsats, but I want contracts for those, and there are those lingering. It's just that we don't have contract room. We still only have room for two contracts. Well, there's a lot of area that we don't have communication over. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Probably quite a bit past where I wanted to burn. Yeah, there's the moon, is it? Well, apparently it does not show the name of the moon when I hover over it, unlike Lindor there. Maybe I should wait a few orbits. So that we'll have communication where I actually want to burn out of. Okay, we've picked up the KSC. This should be good timing. There's the moon. Point prograde. And we'll help the turn a little bit by igniting. Wrong axis, gosh. Maybe I should just go back to the old axis. Killed one Kerbal. Well, I don't know if I would have had the reaction time anyway. And what would happen? I mean, my presumption is that if we had shut off the engine, um, that it'd flop on its tail rather than, you know, uh, turn over and land on its head. This looks like a good location, all right. Plenty of burn time. I don't know if it's enough to like make orbit around the moon. Hopefully it'll be enough to at least control our situation. Okay. Alright. Meaning uh, a radial burn to avoid crashing into the moon. Okay. Well, um, change back to sundown. Wonder if we can get some science here. Um, photographic image is 4.8. Um, start. We've I increased the size of the hard drive to the full two megabytes. That's the best I could do. And. Let's see about how it looks like on transmission um, data. Flagging file for transmission. Transmitting at 12.42 kilobytes per second. Well, that's less than the 40. Let's see. And that was 40 a piece that they told me these dishes could do. And we're at 100% signal strength, so I don't know what the, what the holdup is. See, let's keep that up. We probably don't need to worry about the Decker at this point. Mm. Taking radiation damage. Okay, well, hopefully that won't be too bad. Um, no storage space. Okay, but you are still transmitting this stuff, right? Well, uh, yeah, transmit if you can. Okay, now it's transmitting. When I stop. 
the photographic image thing transmits what we've got. Will we get some science out of that? Two megabytes worth? At least it's transmitting pretty quickly now. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we got some science. Here, let's take, take this photographic image then. So that fills up to two megabytes. All right. Well, I mean, if it, the two megabytes aren't enough to store the photographic image, maybe they should take lower quality images. Back in the day, two megabytes would be a lot for an image. Nope, no science. Maybe we'll just try a telemetry report. Okay. That did give us science. That's good. I guess we'll just stick to telemetry. Oh, uh, we're gonna be on the nighttime side over here. Uh, right when we meet up with the moon. Are we gonna be delaying enough at Apoapsis to let the moon catch up? Yes. And the telemetry report has already been transmitted from moon space high. Um, what I want to do is bring our orbit in. So, let's turn briefly. If we can make orbit, then we could probably do the photographic image thing. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take, in that case. Okay, 53 kilometers should be close enough. Let's resume pointing at the sun. These panels do not turn to track the sun, so... Maybe I'll give the photographic image a go, but I think it just needs way too much space. 589 should be enough to capture into some kind of orbit around the moon. And it looks like uh, that side of the moon is well lit, though we might still get an eclipse, we'll see. Okay, well, pointing properly, running the photographic image to see if we ever manage to get anything useful. Nope, uh, point one info. Oh, wait, we've got... Uh, well, the moon went dark, so the moon's going through the eclipse. But anyway, we did fulfill the contract. But we might want to upgrade the launch pad and create a better launcher for our... Kerbo launch. I think the whole proposition of keeping it on well maybe I could just upgrade the engines but then that'll also make them heavier so that's tricky it'd be safer if we just upgrade the pad and use a larger launcher with more redundancy no well, I can't see the moon anymore oh there it is okay it emerged from the eclipse that was quite a drastic eclipse very dramatic and everything From a greater height, this texture on the moon doesn't look too bad. It looks a little bit lightish. More light than I would want, but... Close up, I was somewhat unimpressed. Okay, we got the telemetry report. Let's start the photographic image stuff again. And ignition. No, well, I'll just keep it to that lopsided orbit for now. Okay, so that's running. Well, let's see if we get some science out of the photo. Well, yeah, let's keep that up and see if we get some science out of the photographic image data thing. Um, we should turn to the sun again. Let's see how it holds out on the nighttime side. I don't know if it can transmit on the nighttime side since it'll probably be also blocked from the Earth. Yeah, it's, it transmitted for a little bit, but then now it's not really transmitting. It's just, it's, I should say to go into hibernation, I suppose. I don't see that option on this core, though. Maybe that's because I'm not in communication. Okay. Nope, there's no hibernation setting. Okay, but we did survive the nighttime side without any problems. But it seems like it's going to take a while to get the data off of this thing. Yeah, basically we're getting like 0.1 per orbit if we're lucky. 
I guess it'll operate in the background, I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of Kerbalism stuff operates in the background, so... Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll just have to leave it be. It should continue operating as long as it continues thinking that it has electric charge, we'll see. I turned off uh, notifications about battery, though. I don't want to get warned about it. And if it turns out that it doesn't collect all the data, we'll be sending other missions to the moon anyway. Okay, well we've got one extra contract slot to use, but we don't seem to have any Kerbal Rescue contracts, which is, which is what I really want right now. Um, yeah, and they've got some lofty expectations, like a new orbital station around the moon that has 4,000 liquid fuel and a research lab. Have we even unlocked the research lab? I thought they wouldn't give us that unless we had the research lab. I'll check whether we have the research lab. Um, yeah. Science day from the surface of the moon. Yeah, we're not there yet. So, and we've got VIP missions and these tourists, but not any Kerbal rescues. So I think the best thing to do for now is just to grab some money and maybe get some relay satellites. This is a heck of a high orbit around Kerbin. Yeah, I guess we can do that. I'm sure we can do that. So I'm going to pick that up and let's do that first. That's the safest thing. I'm a little bit worried about my uh, capabilities, but maybe this synchronous orbit of Minmus. I didn't even know Minmus had synchronous orbits. Uh, with an inclination of 167.5, I don't know what it's synchronized to, but okay, it is a mystery goo on that one. But after we do uh, this mission, we'll do that. I don't think there's no time limit for this 30 day mission, so let's rack up some funds so I can upgrade stuff. And yeah. All right, so I modified our lunar probe in order to be our first communication satellite and to fill this position of satellite in a specific orbit of Kerbin the contract. And all it wants is an antenna and can generate power, which we will be able to do. I've got these helical antennas. I set their uh, transmitter quality to high because I want this to be a relay. They're, I think, our only relay antenna. So relay and that should be enough range to cover the moon and omnidirectional and everything so yeah i think they'll be a good bet i think everything else is direct yep so we've got two of those and of course our trusty little amber probe core and that um well i don't know if we need the reaction well let's give the reaction wheel a uh, high quality its data transmitter doesn't need to be high quality, that's fine. Uh, I think we should put some science on here, looks like we have some room. Uh, assuming that our delta V is enough to get into the prescribed orbit, it is an awkward orbit to get to. It's really high. It's almost Earth um, synchronous level, so at least its inclination is flat. But science, let's get some of that, who knows. Okay, there we go. It's just a bundle of stuff. We don't have everything, but we have the basics, if you will. So, and we're still under the mass limit. 7,350 meters per second. Maybe that's a little bit low. I'm a little bit worried about that. Well, let's give it a try. Atlas 5. Okay, well, our electric charge is already diminishing, so we, even though it's nighttime, like we better launch. Uh, there shouldn't be any... Shouldn't it show the contract? Oh, there's the contract already, wow. Um, right, well, it's at least it's prograde and everything. Okay. And... Uh... Launch. We still got the high quality engines and everything. Eh, we went a bit too high here. Not very efficient. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairing. 
I guess these are just automatically active, so no problems there. Still got two megabytes in the thing. Let's just start that telemetry report. I suppose we haven't done this Geiger counter. Let's run that. Temperature scan. 3 out of 1.8? That doesn't make any sense. I'm not too sure what to make of that. Micrometeoroid impact detector. We've never done before. And barometer. Invalid to Ah, oh, they removed the, the ability to do it in space. Ah, oh, that sucks. I don't know if there's gonna be enough Delta V to get into our prescribed orbit, we'll see. Okay, shut down. 2,000 meters per second left. Seems awful tight. Well, it's not quite our peri uh, periapsis. Well, not quite opposite the apoapsis, I should say, but we'll go with what we've got here. Well, how's that uh, Geiger counter doing? It seems to have transmitted its data. We need 45 data to get the next level. Micrometeorite's going really slow. These transmitters aren't as powerful as the ones we had on the moon mission, though, so they take a longer time to upload stuff. Nah, we're probably not gonna have enough. Oh, probably should have left it going on for a little bit longer. Well, we've got like 30-odd ignitions. Use it like a stock engine. Alright. Let's get up there. Make sure we're pointed at the sun. Temperature scan was transmitted. Um, we're on the nighttime side. Still in communication. Maybe we should drop, uh, stop transmitting stuff. Okay, power's back on. We can resume transmissions. I don't quite understand what's happening. This should be clearing up because it's not gathering that one anymore. That's Kerbin Space Low, but it's not transmitting that one. Oh, now it is. Okay. This one was blocking its way. Alright. Let it clear that one out. I don't know if we got substantial science out of that. At least we're getting closer to 45. But yeah, I don't know if that one actually counted for any science. Okay, approaching apoapsis. We actually need to correct our inclination maybe, even though it's just one degree. Okay, we'll keep an eye on the contract to see when it considers it uh, acceptable deviation, I don't know. If this is gonna be close enough I don't know if we have the Delta V anyway. Ooh, that's a bit off. Oh great, a radial situation? And we only have 16 meters per second left. Almost, if we had done the burns at the right time it would have been good. But right now it's not at the right time. Okay, but it's still a relay satellite, so... Sundown. Still a perfectly functional relay satellite with science. Well, I guess we'll try the photographic image data just to see if we get anything from that too. Eventually. We are very close to that 45 data units that we will need for in letter science. Gonna hold this and I want to check on our moonsat to see if it's uploaded more stuff. At 1.4 now, I just want another 0.1 out of it somehow. Okay, well, we got 0.1. I don't know if it was from... Oh, we got another tick there. So 1.5. We'll check on later to see if it progresses further. But for now, let's go back to Space Center. Now, as far as sciences are concerned, we could get this basic science one. There's a Science Junior, Fuel Cells, State Putnik. We've already got probe cores, though. 
so the Stay Putnik isn't what it used to be. Sample capacity upgrade to Mystery Goo. Don't know about that. Some dishes. That's another direct dish. Radiators. Other antennae. Lots of direct antennae. Not a whole lot of relays. And then of course advanced rocketry. I think we should just get advanced rocketry. I don't know what that navi engine is going to do for us. I don't... Unless it's super efficient. I mean not super efficient. Super reliable. And they give us all the SRBs in the world that I don't want to use. Um, Metis upper stage. Yep, that's uh, trans stage right there. AJ-10s. Built-in transmitter. And we get an RL-10A3 and a Merlin-1B here as well. I thought it was here. Oh, there it is. Well, that's that's the real business. 345 vacuum ISP. It's heavy, though. 0.5 tons. Compared to what we're using right now, that's heavy. Oh, there's some RCS systems in here, too. Oh, I mean, it sort of makes this flight control one a little bit redundant, except, you know, that has some probe cores. Real separatrons, even. Okay, yeah. Let's unlock this. Normally, I'd go down here first, but... Our engine situation... I want the Terrier. So, let's see what it would do on a one-to-one -one replacement, so... We're gonna take this Decker engine off and replace it with the Terrier. So this is 2,803 meters per second. And then the Terrier. Still have to unlock it. Ooh, that's a nice solid rocket motor though because it looks good. Um, where are you, Terrier? So many engines now. If I sort by mass and look for points, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 tons, it should be around there. There it is. Not too expensive. And I don't want the extra bits. And actually we want to compare vacuum, obviously. This is actually pretty good sea level engine too, apparently. Well, much better vacuum. 4,359. No, oh, this is worse. This is worse because it's heavier. Yeah, this is actually too small a stage for the Terrier. Hmm. That's an interesting situation. Yeah, its thrust to weight ratio is huge. I thought the Terrier would be just the thing, but maybe it's not. Or maybe we can just increase the size of this. So there's an SSTU tank. And one thing we can do is just make it longer. 5,191 doesn't seem like a whole lot, though. I don't know what this Terrier engine is doing. I mean, if we put this engine here, 5,254. So yeah, even at this size, the Terrier engine is not better than that. This Decker, even though the Decker has lower ISP because the Decker is lighter. I think I might have made a mistake in unlocking the Terrier at all. It seems like this Decker 311 compared to 345 for the Terrier, but it's so much lighter that it makes the difference. Okay, so well, what I've ended up with doesn't look much like an Atlas anymore. Not that it looked perfectly like an Atlas to begin with, but I decided to call it the Monty. The reason I've called it the Monty is because I was looking for an M name that was relatively short. And the reason I was looking for an M name is because I switched our bottom engines to Merlin 1Bs. And Monty just popped into my head. So, why the Merlin 1Bs? I mean, on the one hand, there's the fact that their ISP is actually less than the Swivels. Swivels got 320, Merlin 1B only has 302. And that is its actual. Uh, the Merlin 1D gets better, but uh, this is probably about right. Um, it also has less thrust, and the Merlin, uh, sorry, the Swivel has 215 kilonewtons, uh, whereas the Merlin 1B has 161. 
but we didn't need all the thrust with our upper stage reconfigured. And since we didn't need all the thrust of the swivel engine, which was getting us like a thrust weight ratio of two at the surface, the lower mass of the Berlin 1, Merlin 1B was beneficial. Also, it's cheaper. So that's good. If we want to go to a high quality, uh, that becomes cheaper as well. So the Merlin 1D seemed like a better option. Our surface thrust weight ratio is 1.63. And that's sort of better because this has a 265 uh, sea level ISP, whereas this only a 250. Um, so the thrust at sea level is a little bit closer than that at uh, in vacuum. And you know we're not gonna this stage doesn't last very long. It's a minute and a half or so. So yeah, we've got high quality there. Though I figure after the Val incident, uh, we will try launch climb. So we'll hold it down until I see both engines start and then release and launch clamps. We had the mass uh, margin for that. We we're close to the limit, but we had the margin. And then we still have the Decker engine as before. That's set to high quality still. We've got the solar panels. This time I removed the scientific instruments, so we're lighter at the top. We just have the antennae. And that should be good enough for the contract. We don't need another satellite with all those science instruments in roughly the same orbit. So we're going to try this again with this Monty 1. I mean, I guess the worst case scenario is we end up with another relay satellite. Uh, unfortunately, we are at nighttime, but maybe I can time warp. It doesn't seem to be drawing electric charge right now. Well, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. It only counts as one engine right now, because it's an SSTU engine. So... There we are. I guess it'll fail entirely. We won't have a case where one goes out. Okay, staging. Uh, staging. And throttle up. Okay. Pretty good approach to orbit. And that'll be good enough. Uh, 110 by 91. And once again, we're looking to lift up to our target apoapsis, but we need communication. I wonder if our other satellite will be around to help with that. I don't think so right now. Well, this is roughly the right location. We have just a few extra hundred meters per second, but it should be the difference between what happened last time and something better. Not exactly where I wanted it, but okay. Incidentally, we don't have enough money for flight planning yet. We need 300,000 for the tracking station upgrade, and then the mission control upgrade is more like 150,000. So we need 450,000. We only have 300,000 right now. Okay, we're at prograde. Still have communication. This is still going to be lopsided, since we're not hitting either at the periapsis or apoapsis. And I was thinking of flight planning because, of course, I would be able to do this burn at one go if I had flight planning. But I don't. So, uh, we might have to do corrections. Ignition. Well, at least it ignited. feel maybe if I turn it a little bit this away. Okay. Um, I see that apoapsis has gone past that, so I'm going to head on there. How many ignitions left? 28. 18 minutes of burn time. And delta V, 553. This orbit, I believe, is slower than synchronous orbit around this Kerbin, which has a 12-hour rotational period, I believe. A ignition. Oh, it's satisfied with this orbit. It just maintains stability for 10 seconds. Okay, we have fulfilled the contract. So we have a relay sat satellite here. Don't know exactly what kind of period this satellite is in. It's rather close to the other one. But uh, it was successful. It had maybe 500 meters per second left as margin. They were very forgiving on the contract. But okay, well, at least we fulfilled this, but... 
It has come in the midst of an episode of Great Tragedy for us. And let's just quickly check back at the Space Center to see if we can get a rescue contract now. I'm just sort of worried that they've turned rescue contracts off. And I would not like that, to be honest. I'm very worried about that. Because I don't want to have to pay for Kerbals. They're very expensive, so we will see. Anyway, with the situation as it is, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.